All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Friday Lives. This is our episode 14. Um, how exciting. I don't know if this number means anything to anybody, but that, that's what it is. Um, this show is uh, our casual Friday conversation with content creators and streamers from different backgrounds. We are talking about their live streaming journey, sharing their challenges, successes, and all kinds of interesting stories uh, about how they started live streaming and how far have, they have come. My guests, um, oh, actually, before we get to my guests, I'm going to uh, share that this show is powered by Restream. Uh, Restream is how we run the show. If you're interested in starting your own little live content creation gig, uh, you can check us out at restream.io slash studio and run a show with video pre-rolls, uh, branding, cover images, guests, highlighting comments from your community, all that good stuff. So please check us out and... Uh, moving forward with my guests, um, today is Jason Brownie and Ian Callanan. They stream as a duo under the artistic name of After Work Rebels. They stream comedy, games, music, and everything in between. For several years, Rebels were Mixer partners. They're now partnered with Facebook. Let's bring them in, and here you are, guys. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, Jason. This is crazy. This This is... Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is how I wake up in the morning, actually. I just roll out of bed, floating in space, hearts popping out of my chest. It's kind of, you know, just regular Friday of my count. Right, Ian? Yeah. Every every Friday, in fact. Every as Friday. As long as I've known them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There is a lot going on out there. It's this is actually my first time doing a stream with three guests, like with two mm -hmm. guests and me. So this is like new layout for me and everything. And like Jason is just, you know, showing up from outer space. You are a little bit delayed, I think. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. I don't know if yeah, you're the it's a little laggy. But, um, but there's a lot I, of fun stuff to look at, nonetheless. Also, I'm I, here, so that's cool. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, Ian, thank you so much for joining us. We'll definitely get to your story and talk about how, how come like you're not in the outer space today, but in a different kind of space, which is also yeah. kind of outer space. So definitely, <laughs> definitely get back to, to this today. So, um, all right, guys, you are, um, your life, you're awesome. Uh, let's get started with your story and how you guys met and how After Work Rebels uh, how how was that uh, concept and project born? That's Go a ahead. good question. Uh, so we met in college, um, and we were both engineering students, um, and we were also musicians. So uh, it was like a family member or friend that kind of introduced the two of us, and then we've just been friends ever since. And we've always been content creators of some sort, whether it was music related or kind of this gaming wacky content that we do now. Um, and that kind of blossomed out of like a couple different reasons why we wanted to do the video stuff. But um, mostly it was like some of our jobs, we were feeling a little like deflated because they're very in the box um, thinking and, and, and content development that in that way. And so we were like, why not just like try to go a little extra you know, After Work Rebels is what we landed on because it's like, you know, after work and we're being rebellious, whatever. Um, although we contracted it to now all rebels. Um, but it was like a, an outlet of just like all the weird stuff that was percolating in our brain, as you can see with what Jason's doing in the bottom. Um, we both have a pretty expansive setup that's very similar to this, like, you know, outer space, uh, a lot of interactivity. You know, Mixer was great for that, but we still brought it over to how we're doing on Facebook and Twitch and just like a lot of trying to break or at least go a little outside of the mold of kind of cookie cutter content that you might find sometimes. Um, and, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's fine. And we're totally into it. And some people love it and some people hate it. And we love that, too, because we're really making it for us. And if other people, you know, glom onto it and love it too then that's great um so awesome that's a little background <laughs> awesome no that's great that's uh that's that's a good story uh do you guys have um any other jobs projects aside from our rebels uh that kind of like a full-time job type situation uh mm -hmm. or anything that you do in parallel 
Yeah, okay. so uh, I do I do some IT work on the side. I also do a number of other projects on the side, so a, a bunch of other streaming gigs. I'm on a bunch of nonprofit boards. Like, this is – we do a whole heck of a lot. Ian has, like, 18,000 um, clients, and so, you know, we try to do our best <laughs> to, to stream as best as we can, uh, starting families and whatnot. So it's been, like uh, – it's been an adventure. There's a lot of other things that we do, but streaming is one of the things that gives us an outlet to be who we are. Awesome. Awesome. And I see you have a pretty amazing setup out there. So we definitely will talk about that. So share um, exactly how, how all this works for you, uh, because it's not that easy to set up like a full outer space blast in your in your studio so this is definitely <laughs> going to be <laughs> going to be exciting uh so when you started like let's travel in time a little bit and get back to the moment when um after work rebels were just beginning you were kind of like figuring out what you're trying to do kind of understanding your style and concept what um which platforms did you start with and how did your content look uh back then in the very beginning so we started on youtube um, just cause, you know, I kind of gravitated towards YouTube for a number of reasons. Like I was just like consuming a lot of content there. And then I started watching, uh, really funky musicians and other content creators and then evolving that into like watching gaming content, which I kind of knew existed, but I wasn't really like that deep into it. And I just kind of like, was like, this is fun. Um, and so we started doing stuff on YouTube. And a lot of edited stuff. And that's just the editing takes like, oh my gosh, forever. Uh, just like, you know, I didn't have like a super awesome PC. And so it was like just a lot of recording and, and you know, trying to figure out what was worthwhile content to cut together. Um, so that became more of a chore than like it was being fun to make videos. So we said, oh, why don't we just like stream it to like YouTube or Facebook and we'll see how that goes. So we started streaming and we were looking for some sort of product, you know, and they were like, so we, the way that we started to do like multi-streaming is we just had like two instances of OBS open on the same computer and then one going to YouTube and one going to Facebook. And then we we're, you know, we were always trying to find something else and we would find some like something that like would last for, you know, a month or two, and then it would not work anymore because it was like really beta. Um, but we then, we, I forget if we saw Restream first or if we saw Beam.pro first, depending on the timeline, you know, I kind of jumble it in my head. But essentially we joined Beam, which later became Mixer because of all the interactivity. And we were like, oh, this is, this is we we could basically do editing on the fly as we're streaming and no longer have to edit videos and we could just like let it happen like let the viewers do all these xyz things um did i get kicked off oh no he's here oh okay oh I'm, uh you know what when it goes full screen i don't see all this <laughs> like, exactly like, oh, yeah like, oh, wait, <laughs> I, I was like wait uh okay so anyway so yeah the um i lost my train of thought but yeah we were on beam.pro and which later became mixer we saw how people were using that like low latency interactivity functionality to streamline kind of their streaming it, it, most people did it with just like a little graphic or like a little little you know something that posts in chat and we were like we could do so much more we could have it like switch to this scene and like trigger this <laughs> audio or trigger this like video and like like why not just go as crazy as possible with all the all the potential of this technology and that's just kind of what blew it out of proportion right now and so like our setup is pretty wacky like my studio and jason's studio are just like really crazy looking um with all the different like the you know green screen floors and ceiling and like walls and and like I have a VR setup and a mixed reality setup and like multi cameras and you know like tons of audio gear and tons of that. See, so you can see Jason in this the green screen layer, um, and you know you it's go. like a massive room for that. And, and so there's a lot going on. And you know, case in point, it, it, there's sometimes it it overloads <laughs> things, but it's just that's part of the fun too. We we learn on the fly. Um, and so, so yeah, it just became like, we can just do this live and hone our skills at 
being um, as goofy as possible in the moment and not rely purely on the edit to make comedy. Um, or at least, you know, something that's enjoyable. You know, I wouldn't call myself a comedian, but certainly like what we do is comical. Um, so it's, it, it, it just like became like an obvious point. And then when Restream came along, because like how we were kind of concerned about like, you know, where we existed in the Twitch universe, like Mixer, Facebook, like we had some disparate groups in different locations. We were like, why not just stream to the multiple locations? We can capture it on YouTube. It's essentially like an episode right. whether or not people actually want to rewatch it. Um, but then it's like, you know, it lasts forever on Mixer. It only lasted like a couple weeks before we got partner, you know, and they would delete it. Same mm -hmm. thing with Twitch, Facebook. We had some people who just like to watch us. Um, and it was just like, where is our audience? Where do they lie? Because of the different mm -hmm. platforms, like, you know how big they are it's like there's there's bound to be a bunch of weirdos right. who are like us on all these different platforms and some mm -hmm. of them when they're they're a little too small it's hard to really break in so we kind of found that yeah. multi-streaming did get us at least some right. activity on on all the platforms so awesome awesome mm -hmm. let's get to the moment when um you partnered with mixer how mm -hmm. can you get us back into those days and like how did it happen how uh how did you find out? Did it really work hard to get to that status or did it just kind of happen naturally? Uh, can you, can you share that story? Yeah. Um, Jason, you know, better than I, but <laughs> I mean, we, we both were, had different mindsets. I think when we were going for partnership, but go ahead. If you want to hit it a little bit or I'll, I'll or I'll take it at first, actually. Let me, because yeah, I, so I, you I, threw it now finish it. I threw him under the bus with that one. Uh, essentially, like I didn't think we were ready for partnership uh, for a while, like probably probably longer than what some of our streaming friends recommended, and also like what some of the people, you know, in the chat, like you know, I, it's just like we had some notoriety because we were the weirdos, like you know, wearing boxes on our heads or like had multiple hats on or like doing like weird stuff that they're like, what is this dude doing? Like, why is he stand? Why are they both standing? <laughs> like, why don't they buy a hey, chair? Hey, right. And so um, the, 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 one of the yeah, things is, is as far as like buying a chair, it was like that we wanted to find ways of setting ourselves apart and then the mixer was the perfect place to do it. And so, uh, we went from it, Mixer was our home, and then we moved to Facebook, and so far it's been pretty solid. But it all got started by us just trying to be a little bit different, um, and that's really where it came to. Awesome, yeah. awesome. That is that is that is a great story, and I see, uh, Jason, you managed to combat the little <laughs> con connectivity issue. I mean, you still yeah. a little. A little delay, but it's not too bad. So there's a few things we found, like with good, our good. setup. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, my my computer has certainly <laughs> like almost caught on fire, or like gotten to Jason's especially. Yep. Like the the number of stuff <laughs> we're like running oh. at the same time, it like easily you know is burning out our CPU <laughs> sometimes. So we we have to figure out server size computers to like fix all this stuff <laughs> to make it clean. It's you know. And then there's other, you know, there's so many things when it comes into streaming. It's like you really want to try to simplify it with like whatever tools you can find. And it's like you can do a lot with OBS. Sure. You can do a lot with, you know, like slobs and or any of any other other platforms for streaming. Um, Phoenix or whatever the one is, um, you know. And so, but for a lot of people, it's just like get the content out. And so, so I also do some yeah. like secret, secret stuff that I don't tell anybody on my. Uh, in the uh, Rebels chat, it's not that secret. But like, I work for a couple podcasts that um, <laughs> I do. I use Restream, and they they love it, you know. And we get we get a lot of people watching, and it, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, and like, I've kind of you know subverted them to using Restream because I was like, I got this, this this promo code you should use for Restream Studio. It's awesome. Do it now. Um, and and the same with like our whole setup. So it's pretty it's pretty fun uh like using all these different tools because i'm kind of like a techie geek i like to like use as many tools as possible sometimes to the point where it's just like vomit inducing like it's just too I much mean, like why are you doing, being overloaded yeah literally uh i'll install something right 
I'll be like, yeah, Ian, I finally installed it. I finally got it working. And then like a day later, he's like, Jason, install these five more things onto your computer. Yeah. I was like, why? Definitely. It works already, Definitely. Ian. Stop it. But the cool <laughs> thing about the cool thing about Restream <laughs> is that I, I just really like the fact of being able to uh, push the content in different places at different times. Like one of the things that we do, um, the like partnerships have some like limitations with like how, how many times you're supposed to uh, uh, stream in locations, but the ease ability for us to be able to, you know, start a stream on Facebook, pop over to Twitter, say what's up, shut off Twitter, pop over to what used to be Mixer, do something on Mixer, pop back off from that, go to a custom RTMP source and like bounce between the things as you're doing your show. That's been so flexible for us and allows us to like not have to worry about that side of things as mm. we focus on installing all the things that Ian wants me to install. Right. Gosh, yeah, that's true. Let's yes. Focus on the content creation, not like the tech stuff that we have to like although you know case in point we, there's some tech yeah. stuff we have to work on but uh but still like it's mostly you know we want to get to the point where we can use the tech in a fun way like a couple things that we've tried actually and we're hoping to do more of is because we're like a duo stream which is not you know super common either is that we often play the same game on either side so we want to show like my side or we want to show jason's side and what we played around with is using Restream Studio and just like switching between the two, you know, like whenever nice. we want to show, you know, Jason's side or my side. And that's that's a fun, easy way to kind of include both sides. We we also tried like a very techie style doing it and like streaming in one by one, you know, square video or like nine by 16. So we'd have like two 16 by nines on top of each other. And that was fun too, but like it, it doesn't really work for most people when they're trying to like consume the stream. So anything that like makes it a, a, a similar experience in terms of consumption, but like different enough in terms of content, then um, that's something we would like to play around with. Awesome. Uh, and for those people who are joining us right now in um, in the chat, I see people coming from YouTube, some Facebook folks here, and um, a couple of people from Twitter and LinkedIn. So four platforms that we are streaming live today. Uh, please submit your questions. Ask me or uh, After Work Rebels anything you would like. I know there are a lot of interesting things that they could share. Uh, their setup, which is still a little bit in progress uh, of enhancements and improvements as we are live, which is the nature of live streaming. Um, please let us know if you would like to know something about how, how it works, uh, since they have this pretty unique thing going on of like two people joining the stream from different locations at the same time and basically working, working together as a, as a comedic duo. All right. So um, now I have a question for you about how we actually met. So I remember the first time I saw you uh, was at PAX South, to the best of my knowledge. It was at Mixer panel. Um, so you were among other partners that Mixer was interviewing and they were kind of like trying to um, promote you a little bit and like talk about your setups and things. And one of the things that you said that really impressed me uh, about your content was that uh, even though Mixer was traditionally viewed as a gaming platform and most of the streamers who were sharing the stage with you were gamers, um, we, you said that our streams are focused on entertainment. The game is just the background. Do you still have that approach for your, uh, for your live content? And by the way, welcome Jason, uh, awesome transformation. <laughs> Oh. Go ahead, Jason. You want to take um, that? Yeah. So I think that the platform itself and the way that you interact with people kind of defines the way that um, you shape the show, and that's how we've kind of, that's how we've gone about doing it. So on Mixer, the the FTL allowed us to do certain things, the the faster than light, and which restream was you could just faster than light work real well through restream. And that provided a certain experience, so we created experience around that. Facebook is a little bit different. Um, they, they do not have that same technology, but we're crafting our content around the abilities of the platform itself. Twitch has a different feel and a different style and a different level of latency. And as a result, we, um, we do, we've done more of game-focused entertainment. However, the game still allows us to maximize our creativity and our engagement with the audience. A lot of folks, uh, especially in the gaming spectrum, don't like to pay attention to chat, on, at least on the Facebook side. Uh, uh, engaging with chat on a regular basis is highly important to us. And that 
So we, we found that we're finding ways, tweaking ways, improving ways of leveraging the gameplay and our creative content and our humor and our intellect to kind of balance out the show and find something that's nuanced in each platform. You can't do the same thing in every single spot because it's not the same in every single spot, nor is the audience. So we really try our best to create what's appropriate for the platform that it's on. Awesome, awesome, makes sense. Uh, I guess I have a question for you, Jason. Now when sure. you're back with the green screen. <laughs> so can you share a little bit more about the times when you stream music? I know you kind yeah. of have you have like this little mix and match uh, style. So sometimes it's two of you, sometimes it's video games, sometimes you just do funny things, uh, which we'll actually have a, uh, an example of because we're going to play your, one of your commercials that you created for Restream. Sure. Um, so how does music feed into, um, into your uh, style? And does your community prefer musical streams over gaming and comedic or, uh, or do they like both kind of the same way? Um, again, it's one of those things that's like we, I, I think they like the music. I mean, <laughs> that's what it seems like people enjoy the, the music streams, but it's also one of those things that uh, we have certain types of shows that do certain types of things. So I've dedicated music streams at certain times. Um, Ian will hopefully have some music streams as well uh, in the near future. Uh, maybe we'll see about that. Uh, maybe make some kid music. Um, <laughs> and, and so I would say that the music aspect is one of those things that I also continue to work on and, and get a lot of Ian's input to, to improve. Uh, it's very, it's not something that a lot of people do. So when you do it, people get, <laughs> when you do it, people are, uh, are kind of thrown off at first, but it's one of those things, just like any other piece of content that you create. If you if you create the right environment, if you engage with the audience, you listen to what they have to say, you take some of their feedback, um, you have a little bit of fun along the way. I think that that's really what it comes down to is if you're able to exude that. And I think that I do exude those things. My talent, that might be a little questionable at times, but at least all those other pieces seem to be put in place and uh, people do seem to resonate with that. And we have a few musical projects coming up as a result of that. That's awesome. No, that's great. Yeah, it's very interesting and unusual style because typically people just stick to one thing. Like, I'm a musician. I'm going to stream how I play the guitar or like, sure. I'm a DJ. Here's my set. Or I'm a gamer. Here's my Call of Duty never-ending 24-hour <laughs> marathon. So you guys kind of like combined everything and, uh, and you know, made it your own. So but which is, uh, I guess, part, part of the key to your success. Well, one thing I do want to also mention is that I, I think that uh, and Ian's going to feel a little weird about when I say this, but uh, Ian does a really good job of like encouraging people to um, find and express themselves in whatever way that they feel. And that's one of the things that one of our, our a lot of our community has expressed to us, whether on Mixer or on Facebook. It's like, you guys are so weird and I love it because I'm weird too. And whether it's the music thing that we do or whatever other project that comes down the pipe is is like Ian's genius, part of Ian's genius is just like, yo, this is me, this is how I like to do things. I don't know if people are going to like it, but I'm gonna do it in the most creative way possible. And if things break along the way, okay, well, that's how you innovate, that's how you you break new ground, that's how you, you move to the next phase of being a creator. And that's really what it's about. Awesome. How's that, awesome. Ian? You had me at, How's that, you Ian? had me at genius. You had me at genius, <laughs> I have to say. It was just, no. uh, <laughs> too much. Uh, yeah, I can agree with a lot of what you're saying in some sense. You know, it's like we kind of, <clears throat> there's a, it's easy to get burnt out just like doing regular streaming and just in gaming. And especially if you're not like, you know, a pro streamer, a hashtag pro streamer. Um, and like, you know, you're like a, gaming god or anything like that and you're you're really doing it partially for fun and, and community and also like trying to build an audience it can easily get you burnt out if you're just like constantly on the grind of like just i gotta stream 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 like a hundred hours or whatever you know like evans was asking uh is there an effective limit on the simultaneous platforms among twitch and facebook and youtube i mean obviously <clears throat> i think there's benefit of streaming to uh, if you can bring your community to like a single platform for a certain amount of time and then another platform maybe, and then maybe all of them for different things. And that's kind of what we're doing 
you know, because we're partnered on Facebook, there's an impetus for us to kind of utilize that that connection that we have with Facebook staff. So um, that we're trying to push, you know, a lot of the the wacky stuff that we're doing, but also something that we know at least will work on Facebook. <clears throat> like they're, we're doing more of like a podcast thing on Facebook. And then Jason also, you know, does music and we do the, the, I do like a workout stream on Mondays and, <laughs> uh, and there's, but on Twitch, what we're going to, you know, move some of the content that we used to do on Mixer is like, I used to do cooking streams as well. And, you know, oh, Twitch wow. seems like a good place for that. Also, you know, uh, Twitch has that Twitch prime integration where you can like watch a movie, you could do like, a little cooking and movie show. And that's one thing that we were kind of probably going to bring in. Cause we, we did that a couple of times where we did like a movie night, you know, a cooking show. We would do these like make us laugh challenges where we would, you know, play funny videos from the web. And it's, it's really, you got to just see what each platform works for, you know, and, and take, whatever good connections on the platform that you have um, and use them as best as possible. So like, you know, Facebook, we're really trying to promote the overall brand. And then like Twitch, a lot of our friends from Mixer went to Twitch. So we want to make sure we're still with some of our community over there. Um, And then, you know, every other platform has its own little quirks and, and benefits. It's really just like, how are you separating out content? I think, you know, just streaming multiple places if you don't already have an audience you know won't necessarily work if you don't also think about like what what that how that content is interacting on that platform you can't just like throw it up there and be like oh it's, it's, it'll be fine i'm streaming to you know 30 plus platforms it's like okay but like what is it doing on that platform like how are you like how are you making that platform better with your content not just that you can stream to it you know, so that's yeah. a good question to ask mm-hmm. yourself. Shout, How do you make it better? Shout out to Henry for uh, oh, yeah. like best stream of your dang life. Uh, that's, yeah, one of our little. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's one of our viewers. <laughs> one of our strong yeah. supporters. That's a, and that's a Facebook exclusive uh, yes. hashtag <laughs> that we don't say anywhere else on any of our other platforms, which is fun. So well, now also, it's here. Now it's on yeah, listening channel. Here. That's right. So it's yeah. like it it you make these little pockets of like unique viewers because like we have a whole history of the people who are with us on mixer who mostly went to twitch but then we still we have like new people that we're just meeting Mm. on facebook and it's like a different you know it's a different belief system (laughs) and different like touch point and engagement and like you know the latency is part of the the thing but you can't always look at it as like a problem just because mixer had sub second latency no this is like a new challenge to like how do you make the content work when you have 15 seconds before you see what they just responded to you with it's like okay and then we'll bring it in you know you just you just like let the technology be where it's at you know you can complain on twitter if you want but i don't know why but it won't i don't think it'll fix but anything but or everything but um at least like see what the platform can do for you that's very that's very presidential um uh, sorry <laughs> Please, what <laughs> now what you, what wait, what you can do for the platform <laughs> both i don't know. see what everybody can do for everybody <laughs> well, Restream does talk- rock <laughs> yeah thanks guys yeah we'll definitely get back to the questions i see some people asking restream questions we'll get to them in the middle of the stream don't worry please continue asking and mm. you guys can see chat i forgot that this uh feature has been added recently that my guests can see chat. It's yeah. so amazing that until I click and people see it, you know, no one could comment on it, but now you're kind of, you know, wrong like on your own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <It's> like Wild <laughs> West, like we're, we're going to pick questions right now. We're going to respond to that. <laughs> uh, so, and there is a beauty of that as well. Um, just, just like in, in, in a lot of things that, you know, come naturally. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, the pandemic and health crisis, you know, typical mm. questions with streamers. Uh, you know, kind of moving forward to spring 2020 when the whole COVID-19 thing started and people had to kind of reimagine their life and their stay stay home thing um, became, you know, kind of prevalent and dominant uh, pretty much everywhere in the world, no matter where you are. Yeah. Uh, how did it affect your viewership? Did you get a lot more views or was it, uh, how did it change? Definitely. Okay, that's, he's pointing at me. Uh, it definitely affected it. And I think we... 
we were we were starting to grow a lot more on mixer subwise like not necessarily like you know exponential viewers because like you know mixer had whatever mixer history but like at least like support wise with the pandemic people were just like dropping gifted subs more often and and, and donos and stuff like that and embers and, and all this interesting stuff which were like you know the the pandemic had this sense of like oh god we're all you know, and we're, we all got to be careful with what we're doing and spending. But a lot of the people that you saw previously came back to support you, even if they weren't always there, but they, or they were, you know, they had you on in the background while they're, you know, working at home or cleaning or whatever, um, which they couldn't do at the office previously. And then they would come in and support more. And, and so we did see like an increase. And then now, on Facebook, honestly, like we're we're doing better probably in some aspects because um, we're still a little bit newer at it um, than we were doing on Mixer, just like financially. So, I it's definitely not like a time where everybody's clamping down and it's it's dry. If anything, there's probably way more people watching streams now, and significantly like people also trying out streaming. Um, so it's a good time to like play around with what can you create. Um, and my, I'm kind of a hermit crab anyway, or a troglodyte maybe is a better word, <laughs> but like, I like to be in a little cave anyway. So, you know, not having to go outside really didn't affect me. I'd rather it be kind of dark and dank and just like be in my little streaming layer. Um, so that that didn't affect me, but I know it yeah, obviously it affected my family and like I changed like how they had their their working schedule. So it be, life became a little more complex, but you know you can find little pockets of crazy yeah, awesome. within them. Jason, <laughs> oh, what do you think? Do you think coronavirus created more space for streaming? I think that everything digital became uh, more accessible and more like the norm. So mm -hmm. if you were sitting at home for three weeks, you know, and your parents are annoyed at you because you keep asking to watch TV or do something, you'd be like, okay, what can I do that's productive? Streaming is one of those things that um, I think a lot of people did gravitate towards. And like Ian said, we saw a different style of viewership during that particular time. Right now, I think that it's important if you have an interest in streaming, pockets of, <laughs> yeah, if you have an interest in streaming, I think that you got to just, just pick it up and just try it. Just start it uh, right now. If you have a hunch, if you've been like watching other streamers and you want to get into yourself with that, the other day, uh, one of my coworkers said that uh, his son decided to watch All Rebels briefly. And he said that his son would have never watched streaming before COVID started. And now he's very interested in streaming. And he was like, can I pick your brain sometime of how to do all the stuff that you do? I was like, all right, we got to talk about what your son wants. <clears throat> Excuse me, the style of game and whatnot. But I do think that it's become more acceptable. My parents now understand the concept. So I think it's available to everybody. Yeah, awesome. that that's weird when my, when some relatives start sharing things or pop into the chat, and I'm like, oh god, it's like expanding. <laughs> it's like because yeah, for a while I, I was hidden. They were like, like they didn't know what was going on, and they're like, why do you have all this weird stuff everywhere? <laughs> like I'm like nothing, just you know, working on some projects, <laughs> and the same with like other you know kind of because I do other business stuff, um, and it's it's still kind of hidden to them um that you know i like i have all this like knowledge in the streaming area and they're like how did you learn about all this stuff and it's like well uh, you know just reading reddit and so <laughs> <laughs> i can't keep it on the slide what other but, thing, what is other there a reason uh sorry quick question for you is there a reason why you're like keeping that away from uh some some family members because yeah. i don't think there's anything wrong with streaming no certainly right? not like, no it's it's almost just like a fun game for me personally like i just i kind of part of it is like the some of the the you know the people i work with and stuff are like you know a bigger platform and they're, they're very successful in certain ways and you know they kind of know me their audience knows me and i don't want to use that as like leverage for 
you know, I'd rather them find out about us because we made it rather than making it because of the connection there. It, it's like, it's like, it's a weird, like, I don't want to like abuse a relationship in that sense. You know what I mean? And um, also I'm really wacky. And so it might come across weird. No, yeah, like they already, I, they, most of the people that I work with already know I'm kind of goofy, but they just don't know how the level of insanity that Jason and I do. And like this right now is like more like professional Ian and Jason, like very, we're just being very like calm and collected and giving, you know, measured responses. But like our, I, what I would imagine or I'd like to imagine is our real selves are like the streams when we're doing all rebels, like when we're like overly animated and stuff. It's like what actually goes on inside my head, but like I tamp it down. So I don't, you know, get arrested or something like that you know like it's, it's little... jason jason with the box on his head projects mm -hmm. uh professional and you know well-weighted yes. answers perfectly right professional. Here. Yes. I, yes i can <laughs> tell you that for like our linkedin audience like this is probably the craziest stream they have ever seen yeah, in their entire like, life so well, welcome linkedin people um it probably yeah, also i look like i'm sitting in a closet with like a sink next to me we'll get like, to that we'll get to yeah. we'll explain that we'll explain that later um <laughs> So you guys have always streamed as a duo. Have you always been separated, like physically? Uh, have you always streamed from separate locations, or have you had to rethink this after social distancing happened? No, we always stream from separate locations. I don't. We only when we are at like an event have we ever been together for streaming stuff, like PAX. When we got when we had like some of the mixer like showcases, like we would be in the same location. Like I would go to Jason. Um, we, when we were like filming stuff, maybe we would do that, but no, I guess, yeah, we already social distanced <laughs> between the two of us. Um, yeah. Wait, well, Jason, do you have another thought of when we did it? Otherwise I can't think of. Well, I think it's just worth noting the fact that we simulate the fact that we're in the same place. Yeah. So, sometimes true. Yeah, so yeah. What we, sometimes when we do certain streams, we'll make sure that we're both on the screen at the same time. Um, even though that we're apart and kind of simulate the fact that we're in the, in each other's presence, but right, uh, we've just known each other long enough where um, distance really doesn't matter. Like if he was down the block, we probably would see each other probably the same amount. <laughs> like it's like it, it's it's fair. one of those things that distance really yeah. hasn't made that large of a difference. But we yeah, streaming. I wasn't sure fun. if you guys were ever together because like you you mimic that so well <laughs> that I was like, hmm, they might be in the same room actually. Like I understand yeah. that there's a lot of like technology going on around it. But um yeah that's that's good to know. Do you want to break that down for our viewers? Like how exactly you accomplish that two people from different places. Where are you guys based off? Like where it's where secrets. We, Those are where secrets. Are no, I'm just saying it's fine. <laughs> um I'm on the East Coast. Jason's a little more inland. And so mm -hmm. we're at least like 500 miles away from each other. Um, awesome. So, yeah, we're definitely in different locations. Yeah, we, we both, I think the biggest thing is like, honestly, the green screen thing helps. And, you know, I kind of have like a pet peeve of like when you move your hand and the green screen cuts off like a portion of your hand or like your head. Like I just never really um, found that like, like professional or whatever. I mean, even though like, you know, I'm, we're very goofy and we break things all the time. It's just like, it doesn't have the aesthetic that I should say that I like. So I was like, immediately I was like, okay, I got to do a 16 by nine green screen, like at least, or bigger. You know, it's like, I need it to cover the entire screen, which you can see on Jason, he's yeah. showing at the bottom, you know, like this is, you know, massive and like the floor is green. So wow. Jason's actually expanded it bigger than I've seen it. Oh my gosh, Jason. So, um, and and, and also what's cool about this, if anybody's ever done mixed reality, which is a term sometimes that gets confused with like augmented reality, but mixed reality is essentially, you know, you're in VR and there's a, a third or another camera that's looking at you and putting you in the VR space. So it's your physical body in the VR space. So if you move the camera, it moves relative to the VR, like the viewer. So it's instead of like, you know, you playing Beat Saber and you're doing this and it's like the viewers are seeing you like gyrating across the screen, which is like vomit inducing. It's just like a camera that's behind you, you know, and it looks like you're actually hitting the blocks or you're doing stuff like that. So, um, so that like getting that technology down, I think was important for us so that we could then, 
okay, we can take this green screen, we can put the both of us on screen. It just looks like we're both hanging out. You know, people even say it's like, oh, what's your roommate's name? Or like, what's your roommate's? Because they think we live together because we're just like, literally, we look physically present. And you know, we'll do funny things where like, we'll kind of interact, even though technically, we're not physically interacting, but we're like, spiritually interacting or whatever, <laughs> green screen interacting. Um, so I think that that was like an important part of us to not just be completely disparate, even though sometimes we do different streams where it's just the one of us. It's like we want times when we come together and it's like, no, this is a duo stream. It's like we're doing something a little wackier and fun. What's going on down there? Let me see. I think we have oh, another Jason joining. There's Jason again. Okay, so Jason, yeah, he's joining again. <laughs> from the wow. OBS computer. We've, oh, this is a fun thing that we've tried to break, quote unquote, um, mm -hmm. the restream as much as possible, <laughs> just because uh -huh. we, we wanted to see what we could do. And we, when we did this, this other next video that we haven't released yet, um, for restream, it was like, I was like, I wonder how many times I can join the same restream lobby like on different browsers or different computers or like the same one and so i think we got it up to 10 easily and it's just it's fun to like dance around with yourself as you're seeing yourself like do the wave <laughs> like, uh -huh. it's, like and then jason would do the same thing connecting back and we just like connect on and off and on and off and see what we could mess around with so well, if that exploded your servers i apologize no, that's that's totally fine. That's actually a very nice transition. I wanted to play the uh, the commercial, the funny comedic commercial that you guys created for for Restream, um, to kind of give people who are new, who are seeing you for the first time, the idea of like your um, your comedic type content because it, it, I think it turned out absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me talk. Um, I can just play it from my source here real quick. Just give me one second. Gotta gotta find it. All right. Uh, let's let's get it played. <laughs> Wait, did you see what? Oh, okay, no, sorry. Email. Ah, uh, Zoom download, Skype download, uh, Hangouts login. Oh. What's my password? One, two, three, four. No. One, two, three, four, uh, five, exclamation point. No! Which app? God, they're still downloading? <laughs> Text, I'm late. <laughs> Good. My morning was great, and you? My morning was so, so relaxing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that yeah. sounds nice. Cool, so this is Restream Studio, so this is like super easy to, to get into rather than all those apps and jump. Restream Studio is better than anything else that I've used. Plus, you can go live with a click of a button. Oh, really? Like now, live? We're ready to go live, yes. Okay. You look terrible, but we can still go live. What looks terrible? Three, Hold on. Oh, the, my hair or two, the No, 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 wait, one. wait, oh, I mean... That was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, oh, I, I thought it was That's hilarious. Fun. I think I think you guys captured this this so relatable moment of which app, like, oh my god, where is this one, and and how is this work specifically? How do I get my camera here? Like, what is like, what is the password? It was just so so hilarious, and uh, yeah, we, we loved it. Like the whole restream team did. Um, <laughs> so what's going on here? Let's get back to. Um, to the, <laughs> oh, to the magic Jason. studio. So we see, going. yeah, we see that they're basically, uh, Jason is basically walking us through how, um, how he's adding. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that photo. When that we could be is... around people. 
that is from uh, Pax South, right? South. Like that was yeah. the last the last Pax when people That's could when we actually were doing that like speed quote unquote uh, speed interviewing or whatever. Like they they called it like speed dating or whatever you know industry. Like yeah. I think we had to sit for like two minutes and we were like, okay, do the spiel. And we're like, oh, okay, we're all rebels. And we're like, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was great. So that was Pax South, actually not this year, but uh, 2019 in January. And uh, Mix right. organized this speed dating. So brands like ourselves, in, in our case, it was Restream, uh, were able to meet with uh, content creators, with Mixer partners. And we had literally two minutes like in speed dating for us mm -hmm. to tell you what we are tr looking for and for you to tell mm -hmm. us what was going on in your world. And it was, that was fun. Uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. So when uh, a couple of months ago, Mixer announced uh, that they're not a thing anymore, they're closing their doors, unfortunately, and invited all streamers to transition to Facebook gaming. Uh, mm -hmm. How, how did you feel that day? And that's the question for both of you. <laughs> for three um... of you. Yeah. So we were, I was streaming with a friend of ours who we co stream with every Monday, Lena Axios. And um, we, you know, like we kind of just stopped and then we got word like right after we stopped streaming. And I was like, of course. Like, what? Like, I kind of, I don't know. I had a sense of like certain people had like left. You know, and then other other things were just like quiet. And like the weekend before was like a, you know, Twitter exploded with a bunch of, uh, you know, pro like situations that were obviously necessary to come out. But, you know, like um, Mixer didn't respond. And I was like, mm -mm. so <clears throat> it was like it certainly was an emotional thing because it was like we built this up for the last like, you know, three years or however long we've been streaming on Mixer. And it kind of was like, a, you know, just pull the plug. And so it was like, Whoo! we're just like, what are we going to do now? Like, and th that is one issue when it comes to <clears throat> dedicating yourself to one platform is that, you know, we, we kind of felt the vacuum of that one platform. However, we also knew that we did have some people on Twitch that already knew us and were already following some people on Facebook that are already following, although not as many as now. And then YouTube, like people already knew that they could still get the content other places. It's like, we're all rebels everywhere. So, um, except for, farmers only yet but that's a that in the future no i'm just kidding that's a, uh, th yeah. that's a future thing no <laughs> and so it's um it was like it was a shock certainly and it was uh it was disappointing because we were like you know of all the things that could have happened you know that was one that was you know really kind of heart-wrenching like that they wouldn't transition it to somebody else or like you know just let somebody else take it over but whatever whatever it, it is what it is and it was a learning moment for like how you you know develop your content because it's you know the platform it should be agnostic to your content it shouldn't be just like you can only do this thing here and even if it dies you know like some of our content kind of just is dead in the water the way we we made it from where it was on mixer we can just like we have a time to evolve you know to, to evolve it um into something different for all these other platforms so that you know the in the end we're kind of the commodity and we're not reliant on this technology to like make us who we are it's like it's totally you know it's our content that is what brings people there and we're using whatever interesting tech to to amplify it or at least like make it easier on ourselves like Absolutely. like i said before having two or multiple OBSs, I had three at open at one point, like um, on the same computer was not a good look for my computer. Like with all the stuff we were doing, it was like gonna shut down like every day if I didn't, wasn't watching out really specifically. So like Restream solved that problem and it was like, okay, so now I don't have to like melt my computer so I can do more wacky stuff <laughs> without, you know, suffering and I can still send it to YouTube and Facebook and, and, cool. um, Mixer. So, good. Do you, so, so one thing about the the whole, I don't know which, I guess you're going to use the, the cool camera this time. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask you, but I decided to just go for it because, you know, there's there you a go. galaxy behind you. The so cool I camera. thought, I thought that was important. So we just, yeah. we're just going to do that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. No. So one of the, there's a couple of things quick about Mixer for, and the Mixer shutdown. Um, one, it was, 
it it sucked at first. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the word sucked, but it did. And then, um, but the thing that it made us realize is that when we went over to Facebook, like when we went over to Facebook and a shout out to our partner ma manager, Erin. Uh, she's fantastic. She's wonderful on Facebook. Um, she's been supporting us along the way. The community there has been really, 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 really awesome. We have a few people in chat right now. Henry is hanging out with us right now. Still, <laughs> still almost on my computer. Henry, I know. I'm trying to do a better job. Um, but um, one of the things is that the community over on Facebook is super, super solid. And I'm, and the, the community that followed us to Twitch also is super solid, too. So thank you to both groups that are there. Um, but it did amplify the importance. And I'm looking at the comments now. We're, we're, we're talking about, we're talking to Carl over on uh, LinkedIn. We're talking to Henry on Facebook. Like the ability and the emphasis of connecting with people in multiple spots is hugely important. A hugely, hugely important. And what the breakdown of Mixer really just did was shine a light for us is saying, hey, y'all, yes, uh, we had people validating the fact that we, we, we were, you know, okay, pretty good with what we do. But we need to do a better job as content creators to not only do a better job of connecting with our audiences on the platforms to which they support us on, but also find ways of leveraging all the platforms uh, as uh, to support what we do. We have not leveraged LinkedIn to the extent that, that we should, and we can connect to that through Restream. That's something that Ian and I have discussed. We haven't figured out the way to do it yet, but that is certainly on our radar. Maybe it's from the tech tech perspective. Maybe it's like, how the heck do you do all this crazy stuff? How the heck do you send uh, a, a random thing across the screen that, oh God, oh God, leave me alone. Stop, stop it. You know what I mean? Like if that's, if that's what's going to happen, I love that. Get out of here. Get out of here. Look. The behind the green <laughs> team's green screen look is also really funny to watch at the same time. <laughs> right. So I guess my point is like, we, there's, there's so much when we, when content creators lock themselves into the perspective of being like, here is what I do and this is what it needs to be. And that's what we did. The breakdown of Mixer made us realize that there are far more opportunities than we gave ourselves credit for and leveraging Restream, like technologies like Restream to its fullest extent allows us to actually accomplish that um, more effectively than just doing it singularly and thinking about one stream only. So a one platform only, excuse me or one audience only. So that's how I see it. it. It was crappy at first, but in the end, we are better streamers and content creators as a result of it. Absolutely, some silver lining there. Can you break down a little bit, how did you make all this happen? Because I know that some people are watching you right now and they're like, oh yeah, totally, OBS, whatever. Uh, for people who are relatively new and who are just looking at what's going on between Jason Green Screen and Jason uh, Intergalactic, are thinking like, <laughs> There we go. And, and now, and now. How, how is this happening? Like, how do you guys do that? <laughs> there's a million updates in there. There's a bunch of ways that we do it. Yeah, we are, you know, like I said, we went to school for engineering, so we're very comfortable kind of tinkering around with stuff um, to the point where it probably shouldn't be tinkered around with anymore. Uh, and we we kind of fell in love with OBS just because of the open source nature uh, that like a lot of people built plugins that we were like, we can do a million things with this that, you know, most people are just using it as some sort of, you know, just engine to capture just their gaming content and put their camera in the, you know, in the middle to the left or something like that. It was like, okay, we could do that, certainly. But we could also, you know, use a million other plugins that people have developed because they're like, oh, this might work for something, some application, you know, like a PowerPoint application they might be thinking for OBS. And we're like, no, nah, we could fly ourselves in. We could have, we could have this grab the video source and, and rotate it and spin it in from the top right and just like do weird things, you know? And that's where I think we like to do it is what can we get away with before our computer melts, literally? And uh, that's why we're keep like trying to get you know um, new computer parts, just because we're like, okay, this is the 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 point where we can't go any further. We got to get the thing that will let us go further. Um, please do all of the serious interviews in this format. Of course, this is the this is the preferred format that we do. And this is like another thing that was exclusive because the way on Facebook is that. 
the way that we were streaming on Facebook is like, I was like kind of, you know, I, I didn't want to do the whole setup. I just wanted to like sit down in front of the computer and I, but I didn't want it to just be like a, a silly camera. So I was like, okay, with this specifically, I'm using Snap Camera, which is Snapchat's like PC based uh, Snapchat filters. Right. And I made this filter. So like you ha I learned how to use their um, Lens Studio which is like a 3D rendering, well, not really rendering, but like a 3D application where you can define like, you know, my mouth, you can define my eyes and you can place them over an image. You know, you can do face meshes where like it would, this whole thing would conform to my face and like move around. So there's a lot of fun tech in just learning the basics, even if you're just a jack of all trades and you're not actually mastered it, you can at least come across with something fun like this, which is like goofy, but it's, it's fun and also, what I found with just this technology alone, it allowed me and Jason to just have a conversation on Facebook. On Facebook, we're just, it's like a podcast, but it's a visual podcast where he's playing a game and we're kind of just talking and chit-chatting and talking to chat a lot. So it's a lot more like relaxed. Whereas when Jason's doing the music stream, when I'm doing the workout stream or any other gaming you know, horror stuff, it's like, it's much more of, a, of an event, event. So like a lot of things happening. I'm pressing buttons, I'm flipping cameras. I'm like high energy. I'm like, usually by the end of it, I'm drenched in sweat because like it's a lot of like active movement and work. Um, but like, it's a, it's a different thing. And it's, a, it's, it, it really helps to break that, you know, um, that fatigue of like doing the same thing, grinding on, you know, a battle mm -hmm. Royale for 12 hours a day. You know, some people who are awesome can do it. And I'm more props to them, especially some of our friends that are like, crazy talented and i'm like good for you and they found it but like for a lot of people that doesn't work you know and it, based on like they have you know responsibilities a family work you know all that stuff they really just can't do it and sometimes it's just like mentally it's, it's hard to do that so we found that like having this different content different ways using the tech really allowed us to like be freer and have fun with it for the foreseeable future I think I think for a lot of people who are watching us on LinkedIn, who are watching mm -hmm. us on Facebook group, like who are kind of uh, expecting from from this to be like more professional educational content, which yeah. sorry, guys, today it's going to be after work rebels. So okay. <laughs> you're just going to deal with it. Um, I think it is a great lesson to con uh, to consider that, hey, even if you are uh, running a business stream uh, or some kind of like uh, entrepreneurial or B2B, B2B2C type thing, it doesn't have to be, you know, boring on-camera thing like you could utilize all those things and and really truly stand out and make it it's, it's not easy running uh, a video marketing channel within your promotional uh, strategy is a lot of work it's hard mm. but like if, if you're going to put that work in anyway why not to make it uh, you know truly remarkable like you guys are doing right now a uh, quick question here from Evans, and sorry, Jason, for blocking you. Uh, I'll figure <laughs> it out in just a second. Uh, oh. uh, but it's a good question. Do you prefer Snap Camera over Xplit's virtual camera? Uh, mm. What What's your What's your preference? Who's Jason, do answer? you have a preference? No, no uh, Jason I do not mostly use uses OBS. OBS. Yeah, like Xplit, we haven't used as much. Although Xplit is certainly like it is the premier you know, uh, streaming application, or at least an, another premium level above OBS, I think just the nature of OBS's open source and plugin library that anybody's making, which sometimes is like, messes up your stream, because um, it's just not coded well, is a benefit in my opinion. However, XSplit has a lot of like, just <clears throat> solid architecture. And it just like, it works really well. And I now virtual cam, I haven't played around with specifically like that much other than just turning it on to see if it works. But <clears throat> the way that I capture video is so, you know, I have, I have two A6000s that have, you know, like one's like a 50 um, millimeter lens and one's like a, the stock lens. So it's like super wide so I can capture the whole green screen. And then I'm running that through a switcher, which I, I can switch whenever I want to, to get like zoom in things rather than like it, being like the same camera zoomed in so it's pixelated it's two different cameras so when i zoom in it's like full resolution you know really nice looking camera and so that's one way that i do these camera switches then i have that into a capture card which i then also split into another capture card and that goes to my snap cam so i can turn on the snap cam 
and it not mess with my main feed. So like that, this is like kind of getting into the tech side. I'm sorry. And I get a little weird with it, but like Snapcam we found is sometimes like the frame rate is a little weird because of the processing that's going on with the filters. So I like to have a separate feed so I can turn it on and do something weird. You know, it expands my face or something bizarre. And then I can shut it off and go back to my normal camera, 60 you know frames per second. It doesn't like mess with anything. Um, so that's like a redundancy thing that I like to, it's not really redundancy, but it's like a, you know, preventative, like I don't want to have to like stop the stream for a second and like switch and like change the format and like, cha- like on Restream Studio is really easy. I, you saw me, I was kept switching cameras, but like, I know BS, it's like, it's a little more of a setup, like to like switch the cameras. It's like we have nested scenes, which we call like advanced sources, which are like, we use them as a source in OBS, but it's really like a separate scene with like a ton of other things that are going on. And so like, you'd have to like go into that source and, and scene and like fiddle around with it. So it's, it kind of gets wacky. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, that's- Basically we have a super simple setup y'all. Uh, it's so easy. Yeah, very simple. Uh, there's very nothing easy. going on at all. I don't, <laughs> if we did a video about it, it would take, forever like oh yeah we did this oh yeah we have this oh yeah we have this like i took some pictures of our evolution from like th- i had an attic space that i sealed off and i put sheetrock in it and like a little rumbler chair when we f- were first starting out and now i just like took over the attic and it's like the entire attic is my layer and um so it it is like i think some people especially if you're a viewer you don't know how much a streamer is putting into like not just financially, but like time-wise, like all this stuff that we're hooking together, and it's like it it can become daunting, and, but it's it's a lot of fun in my opinion to do all this. Hey, can I ask? Can I ask a question real quick to our LinkedIn folks? Is this oh, the, yeah. was is this learning any about how we do things? Would y'all be interested in that? Like, if we started streaming rent like little bits to LinkedIn, is that something that would give be away a- the secrets? Give away some of our secrets. Uh, maybe. I think it will be absolutely because this is something that we get a lot of questions uh, from even from our users when uh, restream people are kind of reaching out to us and saying, oh, hey, like we saw this, like, oh, how, how do you do that? There's a lot of hardware questions coming to us, even though we're software, a cloud-based service, right? So I think it would be very interesting. And for those people, again, sorry to <laughs> cover you, Jason, um, for those people who are interested uh, to ask, uh, you know, more questions about the setup, uh, please follow Rebels on Facebook. This is how you find them, facebook.com slash aw rebels and mm-hmm. uh, i'm sure they will be happy to answer any questions and you know share share more and you can also watch their streams uh, okay. which is which is pretty cool um i'm gonna ask you a couple more questions about how sure. uh how you managed to grow your audience um mm-hmm. because a lot of people will be curious about that before we wrap up i know we're kind of coming close to the end of our um our jam here mm-hmm. uh what is uh what was your biggest uh what was your top following on mixer when you know at the best moment of your of your time how many i remember it was like several like a couple of dozens of thousands of followers correct yeah we had like nineteen thousand followers 19, which was, you know huge on mixer but it was it was sizable Sub- enough and you know yeah it was substantial enough that yeah and the thing that we really went for i think is like notoriety is like a lot of the big streamers or anybody who was in the community knew who we were and they were like oh you're those dudes that do that wacky stuff or like you're the ones that like put the box on the head which is like a cliche but or like the moose thing or it's like you know the founders even watched us a couple times and were like what did we put on our platform you know and so it's um it really it really was i like kind of being a streamer streamer like like a streamer that other streamers like to watch because of we're kind of just doing weird stuff and just being a little out there. And, you know, if the viewers like it too, that then that I, I would love it because that, that really helps. But like, if I'm impressing my peers, that's more fun to me than just like going for numbers, you know, like that's, that's, le- I mean, I, you know, it's like kind of a weird business model, but it's more of like the notoriety of us like being weird and they're, they're making other streamers laugh about the stuff that we did. Like one way that I think that we got partnership because we waited so long on a mixer is we, we engaged with staff pretty like directly in terms of like treating them not as like a um, commodity that I can use and use their time and be like, do this thing for me. It's like, we wanted them to be like 
felt like they were loved or, you know, all of our support tickets, we would always write like kind of, kind of a char- try to be charming or like a fun little anecdote that was like sweet that would make them laugh, hopefully, because I know they're dealing with like a bunch of nonsense, like why is this injection server not working and stuff like that. And so we were trying to make them happy. We did a whole scene that only staff members could press on Mixer. So we had it based on, you know, our, our viewer groups, only staff members would be able to see this button, they would press it. And we go into this whole long tir- tirade about like, why we loved Microsoft and why we loved Mixer and like, oh, why we love the staff members. And they loved coming in and pressing it, you know, like, just like having us interact and do this like weird thing where it kind of broke the fourth wall. And it, it was just a time for them to get to know us. And honestly, I think that's probably what they saw as like, okay, these dudes are creative and wacky and fun we got to be like we got to put them you know give them partnership or something yeah like that. that's a great way to build a relationship so. jason what, what do you think is uh your secret sauce for for growing your community and audience online mm-hmm. well i um when i'll put it to you this way mick uh ian did the most of the work on mixer so i i, I assisted on mixer and so I learned a lot from him as we grew that, and he spoke to some of the tactics that um, that we put in place um, along the way. I learned from that, and on Facebook, I feel like um, we looks like we have a new fan, Evan, and also Henry's been here hanging out. Um, the secret sauce is to really just talk to your audience. Uh, the Having the numbers, you asked us about the number, like how many people followed. What meant more to us is that when we would do a stream, it didn't matter if there were five people there or there were 500 people there. If there were people who actually like, you could chat with, go back and forth with, you made somebody laugh, you you had a moment where they contributed to what you're doing and you had that one-on-one connection. One of the beautiful things about streaming is that Like if you're sitting in an audience, like back in pre pre COVID days, before that, like when you're sitting in like a in an auditorium and you're on stage, you have an audience full of people, and unless you go and you point to somebody random, that person doesn't have a one on one level of communication with you. Streaming provides the opportunity for you to have as an audience member a one to one line to the person who's on stage. So if you're able to find a, to, to leverage that one-on-one level of communication more effectively and more often and more honestly and more genuine than just being like, oh yeah, I see your question. I don't give a crap about what you say. Like, or I'm just not scanning it because I'm too busy playing video games the entire time or whatever content that you create, there's something being, there's something lost in those moments to me. The beautiful part about whether you're using Restream Studio, whether you're using uh, the, the, the Restream um, our, uh, 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 technology on the back end, whether you're streaming on Facebook and LinkedIn or Twitter, wherever, it's that if you're able to connect with people one-on-one, and the more you do that, the more successful that you'll become, and that's where we live. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, I like to close uh, with some kind of like an interesting question. Um, A lot of times I ask people personal questions, but I think for you guys, what would really hit home today is to ask you, what was the craziest thing you've ever done while streaming, while being live? Because I I think if I ask that question to like most of my guests, they'll be like, oh yeah, that day when uh, I forgot to charge my phone and whatever, like, oh, like that day when I, you know, something happened, like my chair broke. Uh, but I think for you, it's it might be taking this to a slightly different level because <laughs> I think like you redefine crazy um, wildlife. So what would be your moment that you would like to share like when you really did something that most people would be like, whoa, that is, that is wild. Jason, you go first. Dang it. Uh, um, so, so I'm going to give two, I'll do, do two, two quick ones. Henry's like, what? What happened? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the craziest streams that we ever had was one that was actually done very quickly, very on the fly, and there wasn't a lot of tech involved. Ian and I, in the in the wake of um, in the wake of a lot of social uh, justice and discourse um, in this in the United States, we decided to do a stream where. Uh, after George Floyd got got killed, we decided to do a stream, a charity stream. And we just came up with the idea in like a couple hours and we just felt like we needed to do something. We threw it up there. We 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 just we put like 
made some graphical stuff, but just a little bit. And we just watched and listened to all watch videos and audio all day about learning about um, race, learning about inclusivity, learning about um, supremacy, learning about all these other pieces. And people hung out with us. And then they donated so much to just two people who believed right. that like we needed to do something and not just um, act like nothing was going on. That to me was one of the more beautiful moments. I don't know if it was crazy, but it was a beautiful well, moment. And it was yeah. donated just for say, clarity. It was donated amazing. for charity. It was donated yes, for charity. Yes, it wasn't okay. donated to us. It was like, so we raised like, because we put in, a, I think we matched what it was like 3,500 bucks at the end of it, which was like, you know, that was a lot of money. Or was it 25? I can't remember. No, but it was I a lot of money. It was it was a lot of money, but we matched the first thousand that we raised. That's right, that's right, awesome. and it, it just kept going. We were like, "What? I can't believe that!" You know, our wackiness did also bring people both like mindedness and like a community of like, let's do something beautiful or or try to like help out in whatever way we can. That's not you know that's not divisive. It's just like straight up, and it's just talking about you know where we can find some way to make the world <clears throat> better for all of us. And, um, and it was it was pretty like heartwarming. Um, so yeah, I mean, on my, Jason picked us such a good one. Now I gotta be like, hey, I'm gonna you, become you like to go weird. Go I first. know, it's like, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, the one time when I duct taped 10 hats to my head, that was fun and then I had to take it off. That hurt my beard. Um, no, there, there were, there were a lot of times, you know, I think when we first like hit like a big honest, and this is kind of like counter to our point, but like when we hit like a, oh, when we got raided the first time from the level up, was it level up or was it whatever like the, the show was on Mixer where it was like all the partners and all the, and a lot of viewers were watching and they just like would single out a stream and like raid these non partners. And, you know, we were just we were just doing our thing. And we're like, la la la. And some people knew us, and we're like having fun. And then all of a sudden, we got hit with this like massive raid of you know uh, more than a thousand people, I think it was. And they just came in, and they were laughing, and like we just did our thing, like you know, because it, it it exhilarates you, and you're just like you now you're even more animated. Um, that really kind of said to me, oh, this can be something that's like fulfilling beyond just like me taking you know the next three hours and being weird on the internet it's like oh i can i can i can bring that happiness to other people too hopefully and they're laughing and they're goofy and they're like you know deriding me in fun ways and like and that was like a that was a point where it became clear that this content isn't just a bunch of weirdos you know in their mom's basement you know playing video games it's like it's it's a bunch of weirdos in their father's attic no like it, it's a bunch of us just like everywhere just doing a bunch of fun stuff um awesome. and then it can be really heartwarming and then it like blossomed into what what jason said is then then we had people who were like well like actually kind of making a difference in in, in whatever way I see a comment from Henry here. I think it's uh, it's definitely worth mentioning. They're very personable with the audience as well. They sing songs for your support. Like that's that is, true. That that's is so true. so uh, cute. So basically, when someone from the audience, from the viewers, uh, you know, needs or has a moment, uh, you guys like make songs for them, or or do you just sing whatever they request? Like, how does that work? Uh, <laughs> that's a good Henry, question. Put me on the spot, Henry. I know. No. It's, go ahead, Jason. So like, okay, so support could be a number of different ways. So if if somebody on Facebook, you can donate, you can uh, contribute by sharing stars. And that's like a way of financially showing support. So that is anybody who supports us that way, or most people that do, we we sing a song about them. But there's been a couple of times where somebody's coming to chat and they are having like a bad day or mm -hmm. um, they, they just said like, man, today just stinks. And then I'll be like, okay, well, what made your day stink? stink and they'll be like yeah you know my car broke down then we'll just make a sar song about the car breaking down and like they're enjoying it and we'll be like what else happened to you today and then we'll add that to the song and then like there's this like therapeutic moment of like that again that one-to-one -one engagement of being like hey we don't have to take ourselves so seriously let's have a fun and let's connect and let's share 
and our happiness and sometimes our frustrations and just get it out there and have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that is uh, entertainment and inclusion and everything in between. That is so powerful. <laughs> well, thank you so very much uh, for joining me, guys. This was so much fun. Thanks for showing all your uh, virtual toys, your amazing <laughs> setups, like your galaxies, your piano, like all those great things, your cardboard, of course. Um, and for you, thanks. Huge thanks for joining us from the hospital. We had like a big, wonderful event happening in your life. And uh uh, yes, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations we on do that. A, that. Should we do, should we do a yeah. baby reveal? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Let's do, do, it. Like do a baby reveal. Yeah. Right, we're going to do a little baby reveal. Yeah. <laughs> some people, some people know I, I had a baby. Well, my wife, I was there, but I was part of it. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to grab her. She's, I was so hoping that he was going to bring the baby on stream. Hey, so I haven't, Hi. I haven't actually talked to Ian since, since the baby was born. Like, like actually audio. I've kind of left him alone. Yeah. Let him do yeah. his thing. And this is the first time I get to see him live with this child. So I'm super pumped as well. Um, yeah, that is going to be pretty touching. Literally yesterday, right? Like this is when that happened. Uh, I, I, yesterday, they, it's been a process, but I think yesterday was the day that, that, that she was born. Yeah. Uh, and, I, it, it, I know. It, it's, it's a, babies are they're squiggly little monsters. They're just little nuggets. Oh, my That's God. Her. Congratulations. Please, please, thank you. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, She's very squishy. There she is. I don't know if I can turn her face towards you, but there you go. There oh, you go. That's so Hello. Cute. That is beautiful. <laughs> she was just feeding for like hours, so she's pretty relaxed. <laughs> yeah, she's very quiet. I have to give she's, her that. Like you were in the room with her the whole time, and this whole interview, it was perfectly, perfectly quiet. So she, thanks to I her. Know. Thanks to her. Like, I thanks know, for, being, beautiful. for being amazing. Thank um, you. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for joining me. Thanks for watching to the audience. I'm going to do a little spiel for closing, and then you guys can stay online. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just chat after after we are offline. All right. Thank you, Anya. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, lots of great comments today. Lots of great questions. I will be coming back and uh, responding to all the Facebook comments that were regarding Restream. You guys asked about a couple of technical questions uh, that I'll be happy to get back to you with. Uh, this is our show today. I know it's weird. I know it's different from what we usually do, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you know you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, you can find After Work Rebels my guests uh, today uh, on Facebook. Please feel free to check them out, follow them, uh, ask any questions about their setup. I know it's pretty intense. Uh, and you can find us at restream.io slash studio for put this kind of setup for your live show if that's what you're looking for. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend and cheers. <laughs>